guys, welcome back to Girl Boss SA YouTube. I'm Zanem Bula, and today we're doing another queen video. We're gonna talk about another powerful woman in African history. We don't get enough of it in our school syllabus, in our Western school syllabus, so I really, you know, this is one of my favorite segments on this channel. And today we're gonna talk about a queen who has quite an extensive, comprehensive history. She did a lot, she achieved a lot of things and she made a very powerful impact in her nation and also just across the continent. We're talking about Queen Nanaya Asantewa. The word Asantewa and the name Asantewa is of African origin. It means brave, it means bold, it means fighter. It ultimately means mother of Ashanti. She was the Ashanti queen. She was the leader of the Ashanti people, of the Ashanti army during the resistance against the British colony at the beginning of the 20th century who remains a very powerful symbol even today a very powerful example of woman power there's no exact record of exactly when she was born she was believed to have been born between the 1840s and the 1860s she was a very highly skilled farmer she loved to farm she was in love with agriculture um, she was an intellectual she was a politician and a human rights activist she was all of these things even before ascending to the title of Queen Mother in the 1880s. She was appointed to be queen at the time naturally because of the matrilineal structure of the Ashanti culture. And her older brother at the time was ruler and he was the one that appointed her queen mother. She was just highly qualified for it. She was well respected for her intellectual mind and for her love of humanitarian work. And it wasn't a role that you could take lightly at the time. It was something that you had to be qualified for. You had to have a natural knack for leadership, you know, for the many responsibilities that then you would have to take on with the role. And it is something that she, she took on and she handled it very well. Stories were told of just how well she handled the role of a leader and how she was really well able to juggle all of the different responsibilities that are placed on you when you become queen mother, including being the gatekeeper of the golden stool. The golden stool is an emblem of the Ashanti kingdom, the cultural system, and power. One of the biggest roles of the queen mother of the Ashanti kingdom is to protect the establishment of authority. Because the queen mother is elected to be the mother of the reigning king, she then becomes the one that presents the candidates for the occupants of the stool or the chiefdom when it becomes vacant. So she is the one that gets to choose who is going to rule at any given time. So she guards the stool because she is the advisor to the king. She's the main advisor to the king, which is the second highest position in the empire. She was known as the queen mother whose biggest passion was promoting gender equality and women emancipation. Even to this day, a lot of contemporary African feminist movements still draw inspiration from her um, and from her ideals and from her quotes, um, from her achievements and just her general outlook look on the social aspect of life. She never stopped her normal farming routine even when she became queen mother. Even with her royal status, she was still a mother to her children, she was a guardian to her grandchild and other young chiefs, and she still never relinquished her interest in politics and administration. There's evidence of that in the history that details her role in maintaining the stability of the kingdom. Even after the death of her brother and the imprisonment of her grandchild, it's these qualities that make Nanaya Asantewa one of the central figures of African matriarchy, of feminism and freedom. In 1896, the Ashanti people started to rebel against the British presence in their land and the British attempt to construct the Gold Coast colony. In their retaliation, the British captured and exiled the king of the Ashanti people and Kofi Tene, who was Asantewa's grandson at the time, he was a very powerful leader as well. So the British were now scrambling to take control of the land and take control of the people. They removed the king and other Ashanti leaders, exiled them to the Seychelles Islands, all in an effort to acquire the golden stool. So it really did disperse and disorganize and destabilize the land, the leadership, the government. And while the remaining leaders in the community were trying to decide on how to best deal with the British threat, Asantewa just held her ground and rallied the troops. Like she didn't really waste too much time on talking because of the 
urgency of the situation. Her leadership and her passion led to her role as commander-in-chief of the Ashanti army. And that's how the Anglo-Ashanti War's fifth and final war against the British became known as the Ya Asante War of Independence. It's also known as the War of the Golden Stool, and that conflict began when the first British representative finally sat on the Golden Stool. His name was Sir Frederick Mitchell Hodgson, or something like that, I don't know, some very white name. Asante were having absolutely no patience for the British and their takeover. She led the rebellion. She rallied about 2,000 Ashanti warriors, allied them with other African warriors, other African tribes, and together they killed over 1,000 British. And that was the highest rate of death that the British had seen from all previous wars between the Ashanti and the British combined. It was a lot of talking. It was a lot of talking in the time. There was a lot of confusion. The British really did scatter and managed to confuse the people but Asante was stood her ground even in these meetings with the community leaders that were trying to figure out what to do she would confront the men she would confront them and tell them that what actually needed to happen was that they needed to fight they needed to rebel and if the men weren't willing to do it then she would rally her fellow females and they would do the fighting and they did because the chiefs really struggled to agree on a military solution they even multiple times suggested conceding to British rule there's a famous speech that she made from her anger and frustration at the situation and their reluctance to fight and that is the speech that a lot of feminist movements today draw inspiration from because it was so inspirational and so powerful and it ends with i shall call upon my fellow women we will fight the white men and we will fight till the last of us falls on the battlefield this invigorated the men and it also challenged traditional gender roles she led the rebellion and she became an image of strength and resilience but not being invincible she was eventually captured and she was exiled to the seychelles and that's the last that she was heard from until she died in the seychelles in 1921 but her legacy lives on she was a powerful leader she was an inspirational leader she was very passionate and she was strong and she was brave she's just an example of living without fear and really standing for what you believe in and fighting for your people and her tactics against the British were as prosperous as they possibly could have been in the time and with the circumstances that they were dealing with because of the overwhelming nature of the colonial strategy and implementation at the time unity was imperative and she understood Understood that and she believed it and she fought for it and that's what she stands for even to this day she is a symbol of unity she's a symbol of women empowerment of female emancipation she is Womanda. In August 2000, to commemorate her influence, a museum was opened in her honor in Ghana. There's also an achievement award that honors women who uphold the leadership values of Asantewa. It's called the NYA, the Nanaya Asantewa Award. And with that, she remains one of the most powerful women in African history. We honor Ya Asantewa, her strength, her courage, her power, and we should all follow as women, as African women, we should all follow in the footsteps of Nanaya Asantewa. Yeah. thank you guys so much for watching if there's any other queens that you'd like us to do put it in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe lots of love and light to you take care of yourselves